day. Let us join Nelly as she introduces our topic for this lesson. We all admire beautiful machines like this stunning sports car. It is designed to move from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in less than 7 seconds. That is amazing acceleration. Although I am sorry to see the car go, it's time to get down to business. Today's lesson on motion is about acceleration. As Nelly mentioned, we will learn about acceleration in this lesson. Now, Nelly will explain exactly what acceleration is. If either the magnitude or direction of the velocity change, the velocity is not uniform. In the real world, many objects move with changing velocity. We say they accelerate. We can define acceleration as the rate of change of velocity. In other words, it is a measure of how much the velocity changes in a unit of time. Note, acceleration is also a vector. It has both magnitude and direction. To get a better idea of what we mean by acceleration, let's look at a few different situations and see if you can pick out the scenes in which an object accelerates. A cricketer bowls a ball. Is the ball accelerating? The answer, of course, is yes. The ball does accelerate in the direction of motion. The ball's velocity changes from zero at the start of the bowler's run up to about 25 meters per second as he releases it. A swimmer races in the swimming pool. He has reached his maximum velocity and is moving straight towards the finish line. Is he accelerating? The swimmer is moving at his maximum velocity. In this part of the race, his velocity is not changing, so he's not accelerating. What about this example? A motorbike comes to a stop. Is the motorbike accelerating as it slows down to stop? The velocity of the motorbike changes when it slows down to stop, so the motorbike is accelerating. Let's think about why the bike accelerates when it slows down to stop. In everyday language, the word acceleration is used to mean that something moves faster and faster. But in science, acceleration is used to describe motion when there is any change in velocity. The velocity of the motorbike changes, therefore it must be accelerating, even though its velocity is decreasing. Sometimes we use the word deceleration to refer to velocity that is decreasing. We say the object decelerates as it slows down. Both acceleration and deceleration describe a change in velocity. Nelly showed us various examples of acceleration in everyday life. Now let's join Aaron in the lab as he investigates what happens when a trolley travels down a slope. Aaron has attached a syringe filled with ink to the front of the trolley. He allows ink drops to fall on the track at regular time intervals. If the trolley goes faster, the ink spots on the track are further apart. He will measure the distance between the spots to work out the velocity of the trolley. Remember, what we're investigating with this experiment is the velocity of the trolley. But if the trolley is going faster and faster, knowing the average velocity, might not be useful. So Aaron wants to measure the velocity at various points as the trolley moves down the slope. He adjusts the dropper so that the ink droplets fall frequently to get a more accurate result. Let's go back to Aaron now and see how he completes his experiment. Let's adjust it to drop ink spots every half a second. Now, the trolley runs down the hill, leaving a more frequent trail of ink spots behind it. The gap between each pair of ink spots represents the displacement of the trolley in half a second. Now notice that the displacement between the spots increases each time interval. And we can build up a table of results of time, position and displacement. Now let's fill up our table. Now that we have our results, let's cross back to Nelly and analyze them. 
Here is the completed table of results for the trolley going downhill. In the first half second, the trolley changed position by 0 0,05 meters. In the next time interval, the trolley was displaced by 0 0,1 meters. What is happening to the displacement of the trolley for each of the time intervals? Clearly, the change in position is increasing. Now remember that velocity is the change in position per unit time. Can you calculate the velocity for each of the five half second time intervals? Take a look at my results. For the first 0 0.5 seconds, the velocity is 0 0.1 meters per second. In the next time interval, the trolley's displacement increases and so the velocity increases too. Here it is 0 0.2 meters. Can you see that the velocity is increasing for each of the time intervals? At 0 seconds, the velocity of the trolley was 0, but it increased to 0 0.5 meters per second during the fifth time interval. Notice also that this increase in velocity follows a pattern. The velocity increases from 0 to 0 0.1 in the first time interval and then from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 in the second time interval. In each of the time intervals, the change in velocity is 0 0.1 meters per second. Remember, we call rate of change in velocity acceleration. So this trolley must be accelerating uniformly in the direction of motion. By carefully analyzing the data collected from the experiment, we have found two important pieces of information. Firstly, the velocity of the trolley is increasing. Secondly, the increase or change in velocity is uniform. In this last segment, we have looked at an increase in velocity in a straight line. This we defined as acceleration. Now let's look at an everyday example of deceleration. Let's have a look at what happens when the velocity of a moving object decreases uniformly. Have a look at this motorbike. Its velocity is decreasing while the brakes are being applied until it comes to a stop. The velocity of this motorbike changed uniformly from 20 meters per second to 0 meters per second in 4 seconds. Can you find the uniform acceleration of the motorbike? Let's have a look at the information we were given. The bike moves forward with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second and its final velocity is 0 meters per second. Since the velocity decreased uniformly, we can use this to find the total change in velocity. The total change in velocity is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity, that is 0 minus 20 meters per second, which gives us an answer of negative 20 meters per second. The negative sign here tells us about the direction of the change in velocity. Can you use this information to calculate the acceleration of the motorbike? Remember, acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the time taken. If we substitute these values into the formula, this gives us an answer of minus 5 meters per second squared. Remember, acceleration is a vector. It has both magnitude and direction. When doing a calculation, we must always interpret the sign of the answer and make sure we state the direction as part of the answer. Nelly used the forward direction of the bike as the positive direction. The change in velocity, that is the acceleration, was negative. This means that the velocity of the bike in the forward direction decreased until it came to a stop. Let's go through the calculation again. Remember, we were told that the motorbike's velocity changed from 20 meters per second to 0 meters per second in 4 seconds. Acceleration equals the change in velocity over the change in time. We can write this as acceleration equals the final velocity 
v subscript f minus the initial velocity v subscript i divided by the change in time delta t. When we substitute our values in, we see that the acceleration equals 0 minus the initial velocity of 20 divided by 4. This gives us an acceleration of negative 5 meters per second squared. As we have seen, we sometimes call negative acceleration deceleration. But please note that deceleration is not exactly the same as negative acceleration. Since acceleration is a vector, we can actually have negative acceleration if we are speeding up but going in the negative direction. This is because now the negative refers to the direction and not the magnitude of the acceleration. Let's join Nelly for another example to investigate this further. A cricketer throws the ball into the air with a speed of 20 meters per second. It returns to his hands four seconds later with a velocity of 20 meters per second downwards. What is its acceleration? The first thing to notice is that the initial velocity and final velocity have the same magnitude, but they are moving in opposite directions. Let's describe these directions using a sign. The initial velocity was upwards. We will call this direction the positive direction. So the initial velocity is plus 20 meters per second. Using these values, can you calculate the acceleration of the ball? Remember, we can calculate the acceleration by using the equation, acceleration is equal to the change in velocity divided by the time taken. The initial velocity is 20 meters per second, whereas the final velocity is a negative 20 meters per second. Also, the ball is in the air for four seconds. Substituting these values into the formula, we have a final velocity of negative 20 meters per second minus the initial velocity of 20 meters per second divided by four seconds. That's a value of minus 40 divided by four. This gives an answer of negative 10 meters per second squared. Do you remember what the negative sign for acceleration means? During the first half of the motion, the ball had an initial velocity upwards, which Nelly took as the positive direction. The acceleration here is due to gravity, which always acts downward. If we choose up as our positive direction, then the acceleration, which is downwards, is negative. In the second half, when the ball falls, the motion is in the negative direction. The acceleration is again in the negative direction, but since the motion now is also negative, the velocity of the ball increases. So, since acceleration is a vector, it can be negative in two situations. Either the object slows down in the positive direction, or the object speeds up in the negative direction. Grade 10s, in this lesson we have discussed acceleration and how it can be calculated. You'll find more information about motion in one dimension at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Remember to try some of the questions in the task video too. Goodbye.